just to get you all squared away to start with, I am a born again Christian. I'm one of those things. I don't worry about things that we worry. I'm more concerned about life and death and where you go after you leave this great world of ours. I just tell my wife, just at that funeral, use it to bring people to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because you're just one breath away from leaving this great world of ours and you better know where you're going. He was a South Dakota farm boy, son of immigrants, a tough kid who knew hard work like the prairie knows the wind, but always the skies were there for his dreaming. His imagination soared when a whirling prop flew the clouds overhead, and when pilots tipped a wing to that speck of a boy in those cornfields below, his heart yearned to join them. At 12, Joe Foss saw a barnstorming Charles Lindbergh at the county fair. It was love at first sight and forever. Joe worked his way through college, earning a business degree and a pilot's license. His career as a marine aviator began just as storm clouds were building over the South Pacific, where an ominous rising sun promised bloody infamy. When Joe arrived on Guadalcanal, the airstrip was barely functional. Japanese strafing had made a green hell of the island. Cool, calm, and fearless, Foss and his young pilots came to be known as Joe's Flying Circus because they flew like acrobats and fought like wildcats. The kids that I had all around me that were flying, I always think of that outfit. They had an average of 213 hours in the air, which is zilch when it comes to an airplane. In fact, I always say you aren't safe to taxi when you have 213 hours, <laughs> let alone be in combat. And those kids, we'd go on a mission, and some of them didn't come back. And, and so that's why, you know, you have that intense feeling about this country, and so get so upset about the characters that really want to destroy it. Shot down over the Pacific, Joe escaped hungry sharks and later survived malaria. But he left Guadalcanal with 26 aerial kills and countless smokers, matching Eddie Rickenbacker's World War I record. Life magazine featured his square-jawed smile on the cover, and President Roosevelt, on behalf of a grateful nation, personally presented Joe with the Congressional Medal of Honor. After the war, Joe could have been a poster boy for any corporation, living legend box office draw. The world was Joe's for the taking, but he chose instead to give. He ran for and became governor of South Dakota, the youngest ever. He served as commissioner of the American Football League, hosted the popular American Sportsman television show, shared his Christian testimony, most of all, kept his fighting spirit focused on freedom. As a lifelong hunter and shooter, he was especially concerned about the sanctity of the Second Amendment. I don't want anyone fooling with the Constitution. It's the only document outside of the Bible that's lasted. Joe's love of country and freedom led to a lifelong bond with the National Rifle Association, including a term as our president and member of our board of directors. With a boyish grin for everyone, especially the young, Joe's jokes and laughter always preceded him up and down the halls of headquarters and our annual meetings. America loved him, but he was our hero too. When General Joe passed away on New Year's Day, an Arizona newspaper observed that more than anything else, Joe Foss was the real deal. He taught us how real heroes walk and talk, laugh and work. Brave, but never arrogant. Devoted, but never too busy. Beloved, but never vain. Now, Joe's gone. But a new star surely circles the heavens. One that looks a lot like an old World War II wildcat. 
Let's hope that the cockpit contains a Bible, an American flag, and fresh cigars. And that when his bright star stretches above an endless South Dakota cornfield, a boy peering up through the summer twilight sees and understands. Tip your wings to him, Joe. And touch his life like you touched ours. Maybe someday he'll grow up to be the real deal. Like our hero, General Joe Foss. <laughs>